Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Brutal Foods. As you can tell by the title of this video along with my elaborate snack cake costume, today we're gonna be doing something fun because today we are cooking with Twinkies. Oh <laughs> This is Twinkie the Kid. Ever wonder how they get that creamy filling into the middle of a Twinkies cake? First, they put down the creamy filling, then they bake the cake all around. See, they got this big tube full of stuff and they just squish it in. It's just born there. Hostess Twinkies cakes, fruit pies, and cupcakes. It's just born there. Twinkies are an American classic. They are a golden sponge cake with a white cream center. Pretty tasty. I haven't had a Twinkie since before they got pulled from shelves and then came back to shelves right after. But even though it's been a while since I've had a Twinkie, I can still picture that uh, flavor in my mind's eye. I, I can taste that flavor on my mind's tongue. I came across the Twinkies cookbook at a Half Price Books and I just knew that I had to pick it up uh, and try out some recipes for a video. So here we go. We're going. Today we're actually going to be trying out four different recipes. Three of them are from the Twinkies cookbook. One of them is from a movie. Some of you might know where I'm headed with that. I'm not looking forward to it. But we are going to start this Twinkie journey with a recipe called Pigs in a Twinkie. My 12 year old nephew Shay created this recipe because he thought it would be something other kids would enjoy. It's important to make sure that sausage is cooked thoroughly. Well, you just made that sound pretty delicious. Uh, Janine Obar from Burbank, California. So we're gonna make a recipe that a 12 year old put together. The book doesn't even say that he likes it. He said he thought other kids might like it. So far, nobody likes this recipe that I'm aware of. To prepare this dish, we're gonna need some Twinkies. Uh, you can actually tell the box is already open. I had to throw some of them in the freezer for an upcoming recipe. Pork sausage links and maple syrup. And that's it. We already know where this is headed, right? I mean, clearly you're gonna make the sausage, stick it in a Twinkie, and then pour syrup on it. That's what we're gonna do. I mean, it could be worse. It's from a chapter in the book called Twinkies and Meat. And there's only three recipes in there, so my options were pretty limited. Uh, so let's, let's make some sausage. <laughs> Since we're making four different recipes today, I think I'm only gonna make one of these little sausage guys for one Twinkie. I don't need more than that right now. I gotta pace myself, you know? I'm gonna be eating a lot of Twinkies today. Don't stay straight in the pan, dude. Sausage. I really quite like these uh, pork sausage links. They got a really good smell. They got a really good taste. Uh, what else? What else is there to like about food? They look wiener esque. So I'm, I missed the part where we're supposed to preheat the oven to 350. So we're gonna have to wait just a second while that preheats. I'm supposed to drain the sausage. I kind of didn't. I'm just gonna dab it with a paper towel, make it nice and not so slimy. Then we need to grab a Twinkie. Ooh, they're so tiny. I guess I remember Twinkies being a little bit bigger, but uh, maybe not. Ooh. Okay, you probably know what comes next. We're gonna cut the end off a Twinkie here. Very nice. And then we're gonna stick <laughs> We're gonna stick the wiener into the Twinkie hole. Just like this, I might have to censor this. I'm not totally sure. Just like that. Just, just like that, perfect. Let's try and get it in there a little bit better. There we go. We could even put the top back on. 
perfect. It's like it was never opened in the first place. Then we're gonna take our uh, Twinkie creation here, uh, set it on, should I set it this way, you think? And now we bake at 350 for 10 minutes, which seems kind of like a lot of time. I actually think that this has a chance to taste all right. I'm not too afraid of this one. There's definitely upcoming recipes that I'm, I'm more scared about. I think this one's gonna go all right. With the breakfast sausage, you know, people put whipped cream on pancakes. I've been to IHOB, I've had a silly face pancake. Okay, if we weren't putting syrup on it, it seems like it could be a nice uh, travel snack, you know, a nice way to keep your hands clean so you don't get any of that Twinkie cream or sausage juice <laughs> all over your fingers. Uh, this is a disaster. Well, there it is. There's our uh, Twinkie creation. You know, if I'm being 100% honest, it, it doesn't smell that bad. It smells very sugary, but you know, that's kind of what I expected. The sausage kind of fell out of the Twinkie. The Twinkie, and it looks a bit weird around uh, that in part there, but it still smells really good. Just says serve warm with syrup. So here's some syrup. I mean, clearly this is just gonna be a direct injection of sugar right into my veins, but I I'm okay with that. My body might not be okay with that, but I'm okay with that. Well, happy breakfast, everybody. Uh, happy breakfast. This is gonna be delicious. I tell myself it's gonna be delicious, it'll be delicious. It's just like a pancake. It's a pancake breakfast with, uh, you know, there's a wiener in there. It's a little crumbly. The edges outside is very crispy, uh, but it kind of all just breaks apart. There we go. Uh, bottoms up, bottoms up, bottoms up. Eat food, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> so much sugar. It's very breakfasty. I mean, honestly, the syrup and the sausage, the flavor just dominates the Twinkie. I don't really taste, I kind of taste the inside. You get a hit of that sweet filling, maybe a bit of the cake, but most of what I'm tasting here are, is the pork sausage and the uh, maple syrup. And that's pretty good. Just wrap it in a pancake. Get the Twinkie out of here, wrap it in a pancake, way better. I'm sure kids would love this because of just the amount of sugar in there. If you're like, man, my kid needs more sugar. I'm just not giving my kid enough sugar. He needs more sugar in his breakfast. Your solution right here. This is not even really remotely worth trying. Uh, kind of a waste of a Twinkie. Eat the sausage syrup separately. Eat the Twinkie separately. There's really no reason to um, put them together. Combine them. Put them together. Well, since that was pleasant, let's go ahead and get the uh, non-pleasant thing out of the way. Twinkie recipe number two is gonna briefly take us away from the Twinkies cookbook. Uh, as much fun as it is to look through and as crazy and zany as you might think the Twinkie cookbook is, they all seem like pretty decent ideas. However, there is a Twinkie creation I've known about for some years now and have yet to try. And anyone familiar with the movie UHF uh, should know what I'm talking about. Yes, today I'm going to be trying the infamous Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. If you would like to make it along with me, you're gonna need some Twinkies. You're gonna need some hot dogs. I have these uh, Applegate Natural Uncured Beef Hot Dogs. They got kind of a funky taste. Uh, they're supposedly one of the more healthier hot dog options. So these are the one I've been picking up lately. I've adjusted though, I like them now. If you get these though, be prepared for a bit of a weird, a bit of a funky taste. We're gonna need easy cheese, 
can't say I've had any of this stuff uh, since I was young. Uh, for those of you not in the know about Easy Cheese, it's like a compressed cheese paste that you spray out. It's kind of like whipped cream, but it's cheese. And it tastes kind of how like that sounds it would taste. And finally, we're gonna need milk. Yum. I mean, these are four things that surely look like they go together. I can't wait to eat them. Thanks, Weird Al. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the fridge while we wait. And this is gonna go pretty much how it looks like it's gonna go. I'm gonna make the hot dog first and uh, the rest after. You know, some of you guys don't think that I know how to boil water. In one of my previous videos, I, uh, I boiled some water. It took a while because I left the lid off of a pot. That was just to get a cool shot of the water boiling, guys. Don't you want to see those bubbles pop up? Isn't that worth waiting a bit longer and complaining about it? Huh? But really though, thanks uh, for the cooking advice that you guys leave me in the comments. 90% of the time, it's something that I do need to know, so thank you for that. Okay, I'll be back when one of these hot dogs is done cooking, and then we can continue this nightmare. Here, Bob, a Twinkie Wiener sandwich, your favorite. Uh, so this is exactly what it looks like. It is a Twinkie with a hot dog in the middle of it and easy cheese squirted on top. If you've never seen UHF before, you're probably wondering where the milk comes in. Um, you dip it. You gotta grab life by the lips and yank as hard as you can. <laughs> See anything on the one ads? Yeah. Apparently this is a thing that Weird Al ate at some point uh, voluntarily. I've read that he still eats it from time to time with tofu dogs. I don't think he eats real meat anymore, but either way, a disaster. I love you Weird Al, but a disaster. I feel like the longer I wait, the worse it's gonna be. The hot dog juices are just gonna soak into the bun. Oh my God, oh, it's falling right through. Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Looking good, looking good. I'm just gonna get it over with, just gonna get it over with. How do I, it won't fit. Oh, <sighs> oh! oh okay. Oh, Winky Wiener Sandwich! No. No. I don't have to eat more of this, right? You guys don't want me to eat more of this, right? You want me to move on and just, oh. I'm not eating more. You want to know what this tastes like? You do it. It's a nightmare. It looks, it tastes exactly as it looks. It tastes like this. You want this? I don't want this. The first thing I tasted was the hot dog and then just immediately after that you get the sugar cream filling plus the squishy sogginess of the bun that's got some hot dog juice in it, the, the Twinkie bun. I legitimately cannot believe that that is a thing that someone voluntarily eats. Something that someone would try, sure. People will try anything, I just tried it. But the fact that someone ate that so often and it was such a fond food of theirs that they continued to eat it with a tofu dog after they became vegetarian is insane. It's crazy. I guess you could say that it's a little weird. I mean, there's a reason that that is not in the Twinkies cookbook. There's a reason that you've probably never heard of it outside of UHF. It's terrible. 
Okay, so I gotta be honest, the Twinkie Wiener sandwich left me a little frazzled. That was really gross. I don't wanna do more Twinkie stuff today. We still have two more recipes coming up. I'm gonna record those tomorrow though. I'll be more refreshed. My palate will be cleansed and uh, we'll have more Twinkie fun uh, tomorrow, which for you guys is gonna happen like right now. Hey everybody, it's tomorrow. Did you miss me? I sure did. Have you made a comment about my awesome headband yet? I bet you're thinking about it. Even though there's a bit of a gap between the first two recipes I made and the two I'm making today, uh, I still feel very upset about that Twinkie Wiener sandwich. Just vile, just a vile creation. But that just makes it more exciting that the two things I'm making today, I think are gonna be pretty good. So let's get started. My family loves chocolate and mint together. When we make shakes, we like to thicken them up with cakes and cookies. Twinkies just seem to be the perfect complement to our grasshopper concoction. If you're immediately wondering what grasshopper is, it's a cookie. It is a mint and uh, fudge cookie from Keebler, those uh, freaky little elf dudes. They're basically just Thin Mint knockoffs. I don't know if this came before or after the Thin Mint, but I'm pretty sure this came after, and they're not as good. Still pretty good. Worth picking up if you can't, you know, hunt down a Girl Scout. Uh, so that's, you need some grasshoppers for this. Gonna need some Twinkies, of course. We're gonna be using some uh, chocolate syrup. 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 Milk, again, uh, but I'm not afraid of it this time. And vanilla ice cream. Ooh. So, so it's, it's a shake. shake. It's, it's a milkshake. Milk shake. It's, it's gonna, gonna be delicious. delicious. Let's, Let's go. go. The actual recipe in the Twinkies cookbook makes enough to serve three to four people. I'm just one guy and I don't even eat that much. So I'm gonna try and make a personal sized. It may end up not accurately reflecting the recipe, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm also gonna put this stuff back, you know, until I need it. I don't need melty ice cream. Also, I don't have like a big fancy blender or anything. I'm just gonna use my Nutribullet, which is great because it's really gonna, you know, suck all the nutrients out of that Twinkie. Make sure I get nice and buff. Looks like first we're supposed to blend the Twinkies in with the milk. Drop a Twinkie in here. If I'm only doing one Twinkie, how do I go down from two and a third cups of milk? That'd be a sixth of whatever that is, right? Getting kind of flashbacks to the, you know. Now we just gotta blend this together. Well that sure looks like uh, milk. Cookies and syrup blend until smooth. Let's get some cookies. Really I should only put one cookie in here. I'm gonna put two, cause I really like, I really like cookie. Plop. Why do I need the syrup though? Isn't the cookie enough? Is this too much chocolate? I'm just gonna guess, I don't really care. Probably fine. I'm a professional and professional chefs, you just use your best judgment. So, I'm sure this will be delicious. That's looking tasty. That's looking pretty chocolate milky. Now we just have to add the ice cream. I need an ice cream scoop. So this recipe calls for three cups of vanilla ice cream, but uh, eh, I'm just gonna throw a few scoops in there until it looks good, and it'll be fine. I'm afraid of making it too thick, but we can always add more milk if it ends up being too thick. That's not a problem. Now all we have to do is That does not look thick enough for me. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we're still pretty watery. Let me add another Twinkie. It's smelling really tasty. Smelling very minty. Looking a little bit better. I think ideally, you probably want your milkshakes more thick than this, but I'm at least gonna give it a try before I you know, try to fix it some more. Mmm. Well, that's delicious. I don't need to fix that at all. This, um, Tastes a lot like Girl Scout cookies. Mmm. 
I can't say I taste the Twinkie. I gotta be honest, can't say I taste the Twinkie. That chocolate mint is really, really overpowering. But again, I kind of guessed on how much I should put in here, so it's possible that if you make it the way that's in the cookbook, you'll taste more of the Twinkie, but I don't mind, honestly. You could easily just market this as a Thin Mint or Grasshopper milkshake. I don't really get the point of the Twinkie, but I don't mind it. Like, if you hand this to me, I would enjoy it, but I wouldn't say, is there Twinkie in this? Is that a Twinkie I taste? Does mint chocolate and banana go together? For some reason, I feel like throwing a banana in here would make it extra good, but I'm not totally sure. Mmm. I'd call that one a huge success and with perfect timing uh, because it's summer and that would be really tasty on a nice hot day. I think you should give that one a try, honestly. If you, even if you don't want to put uh, Twinkies in it, I don't, oh. Even if you don't want to put Twinkies in it, I think you should give the Grasshopper Milkshake a try. Less of a Twinkie drink, more of a cookie drink, uh, but still really, really tasty. And with that, we have reached the final recipe, which just happens to be the recipe that I am most excited to make. It surprises me that I've never had this before uh, because it's one of the most famous Twinkie recipes. Uh, but the time is now because today we're going to be deep frying a Twinkie. Deep fried Twinkies are nothing new, been around for a while. You know, they've even sold, I think, frozen packaged deep fried Twinkies, which can't imagine that's anywhere near as good as actually deep frying a Twinkie, but they sold it. And I'm excited today because I'm going to get the real experience. So let's get started. Obviously we're gonna need Twinkies. We are going to need oil for frying. My poor vegetable oil bottle uh, is a little sad, but it is okay. Milk, cider vinegar, uh, which I've never heard of before. This is apple cider vinegar. I don't know if there's other kinds. I sure hope that this is the right one. Flour and confectioner's sugar. Now, the recipe also recommends uh, raspberry syrup to put on top, which I picked up and then promptly remembered that I don't like that crap. Aside from maple syrup, if you're just putting syrup on a thing, that's not really my jam. <laughs> jam. The first thing you're going to want to do is freeze the Twinkies. I already have a few in my freezer ready to go. Recipe recommends that you freeze it for several hours or overnight. These have been going overnight, so I should be good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oil. I'm using my mini deep fryer again, uh, but you can use oil in a pan if you want. Just make sure the oil is deep enough to cover the entire Twinkie. We're going to heat that oil to 350 degrees. So while that's heating up, we are going to make our batter. First, we're gonna combine the milk, vinegar, and oil. Mix that together. This time I am gonna follow the amount of stuff I put in the batter. I wanna make sure I get it right, and also I'm gonna be frying more Twinkies uh, off camera after I'm done. So I wanna make sure I have enough. In a smaller bowl, we're gonna combine the flour, baking powder, and the salt. One cup flour, one teaspoon baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk that together real quick. We're gonna blend them together, which hopefully goes well. I always worry that the consistency uh, is gonna be wrong. When I blend together wet and dry ingredients, well, I guess I'm not blending. Oh, that's definitely thickening up. All right, now we got this nice, smooth batter. It's actually looking pretty good. You know what it smells like? It smells like buttermilk. Is buttermilk milk and vinegar? Is that a thing? I'm not gonna be able to stop to read instructions for this next part, so I'm gonna make sure I got it down. Dust the Twinkies lightly with some flour. I got some flour right here. Dip it into the batter. Coat it evenly, allow the excess batter to drip off. Then we put it in the oil. Okay, I gotta get a little more organized here. Don't, I don't think I'm gonna use this. I'm sure I can find a use for strawberry jam, but nah, not today. 
Got my frozen Twinkie. I'm gonna dust it with flour, which I'm just now realizing that I don't really know how to do. That's dusted. Okay, then we're going into the batter. Cover it, roll it around maybe a little bit. Let the excess drip off. There's a lot of excess. Am I allowed to shake it? Now we're going in the oil for 45 seconds. I think maybe I put too much batter on there, um, but I mean, batter is delicious, so that's fine. Also, I don't know what you're supposed to use to poke stuff around in a deep fryer thing. I've got, I figured something metal is a good idea. Been 45 seconds, so we're gonna flip it as best as we can. How do I, holy crap, okay. Well, it's looking big. I think maybe too much batter. I think, I don't know if the batter's too thick, I'm not really sure, but it's looking huge and pretty delicious. Time is up. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a donut. Look at that donut looking thing. Now I'm gonna dust it with some confectioner sugar. Still don't quite understand the concept of dusting. I'm assuming it's something like, you know, you just wanna put, that doesn't look, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right at all. Uh, I think I'm gonna try it without the syrup and see if it needs it first. I'm not even really that much of a topping guy. I like plain, basic, you know, this is complex enough for me. All right, everybody, time to try this creation. I'm pretty, I'm pretty jazzed about this. All right, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Nice front, it just looks like a filled, like a cream filled donut. I guess that's what I should expect it to taste like, right? Mm. Oh man. Mm. Clearly there's a reason people are deep frying Twinkies. It's golden, it's crispy, it's warm and soft and mushy on the inside. I will say though that it is a lot, you know, very, I don't know if heavy is the right word. I wouldn't mind splitting this with someone and just taking, honestly, half of this is gonna be enough for me. It's hard to argue with fried sugary treats, man. That is just tasty. It definitely tastes and has that feeling of like a carnival food, like I said, a state fair kind of food. It's just very, not dense, not heavy. It like leaves an oil coating almost in my mouth. Just for me personally, I think a full one of these is a bit much. I don't think my stomach could handle all of this fried goodness all at once. I really like the batter. In fact, it makes me want to try and dip other snack cakes in it and fry them just to see what else tastes good. If you're hosting an event and you want some type of snack treat, this would be great. People would love this. I think it would be great if you put it on a stick, get some of the wooden sticks to stick it on uh, so you don't have to touch all the sugar and oil, but that was really tasty. It was delicious. I would say that it tastes as good as it looks and it looks pretty stinking good. Bottom of the list is obviously the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. Uh, terrible, just awful. In fact, I'm gonna rank it as number 85 even though I only did four things. Number three is gonna be the pigs in a Twinkie. Tasted pretty good, very breakfasty, but I don't really see the need for a Twinkie. I think replacing the Twinkie with a pancake would taste a lot better. Here's where it gets a little tricky because the two things I made today were both really good. We got the fried Twinkie, nice, crispy, state fair food. Then we got the Twinkie Grasshopper Milkshake. Nice, cool, refreshing. It'd be great on a hot day. I loved both, but I gotta give it to the deep fried Twinkie. In fact, I am disqualifying the Grasshopper Shake. Disqualify. I feel like for it to be a Twinkie recipe, the Twinkie needs to be like the star of the dish. Um, Maybe I'm watching too much Chorped. But in the milkshake, I couldn't taste the Twinkie. It, it was used to thicken up the shake, which is great. 
but you could swap in any number of things to thicken up a milkshake and probably not be able to tell the difference. Not quite a Twinkie recipe, in my opinion. How about you? Have you tried any weird Twinkies recipes? I mean, people are out there doing it. There's 12 year olds inventing Twinkie recipes. Someone out there has had to try something else. And really, I just hope you enjoyed this video. This one was a lot of fun to film, even though it was a weird two day event. I kind of liked the break in between. It kept me nice and refreshed. I've been really enjoying making these food videos. It's not a direction I saw my channel heading in initially, but I'm glad so many of you are enjoying the food ride along with me. Thank you so much for watching. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, cooking, video production, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Want to chop onions like a real chef? Well, there's a class for that. Or maybe you're interested in taking a class that teaches you how to edit your own videos. Whatever it is you'd like to learn, Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. The first 500 people to sign up with the link in the description will get their first two months for free. So go on over to skill.sh slash brutal moose or click on the link in the description to sign up. And thanks again to Skillshare for the sponsorship. Flies eat poop. Get over it, okay? That's for you.